night, Sienna and Grova just came in from outside and it's snowing out. As you can see, he's a special snowflake right now. Right? Look at you. You're soaking wet and there's your crazy chicken. Let me see your chicken. Show everybody your chicken. Okay, he doesn't feel like it right now. And here we go. So I'm going to show you an antique 1860s photo album. And it's uh, all original. As you can see, it's in really good shape. And it has a little clip on the side. The edges of the pages are gilded in gold. Well, not real gold. And... Inside it has a beautiful lithograph and it's hand colored with gold gilded words and letters. As you can see it has a really lovely sheen to it. It's like a metallic print and it was made um, and it was actually published by J.E. Tilton and Company in Boston, Massachusetts in 1862 you can see the date here on the bottom it's very hard to zoom in on that because the letters are so metallic and let's begin most of the photos in this book are from the 1860s time frame to 1870s they vary And most of them are CDV photographs, and there are some tin types in here. This lady has really cool hair and nice jewelry. Look at that big black chain around her neck. I believe those uh, necklaces were made out of something called gutta percha and or gutta perca and it was like made out of some kind of rubber and it was made to look like jet. It was like vulcanized rubber, I believe. These look like 1860s or 1870s photographs and generally when you see these fringe chairs, they were only used as photo props during the 1860s and 1870s. Most of these people are New, New Englanders, and it has some info. I'll pull these cards out later and show you guys any information I find on these pictures. This looks like an 1870s photo. Again, another 1870s tin type. And tin types are photographs that were developed on blackened iron. They were not developed on tin. Excuse the noise. It's my dog. Here he spoils my videos. He wants something. He always wants everyone's attention. And again, we have that fringe chair telling me this is an 1860s, 1870s photograph. My dog is, oh my goodness, he is so annoying. Sorry, guys. It's snowing out here on Long Island, and sadly, there is a lot of racket going on outside, like between the uh, people with snow blowers and the salt spreading machines that go, you know, trucks that go around, and he's barking at them. My neighbors are out shoveling, and he thinks he's protecting the house right now. This is a really cool 1860s photograph. Another really awesome 1860s photograph showing this bearded fellow. And I believe my dog will probably be barking for the whole duration of this video. At least YouTube can't copyright uh, infringe me on that one. Oh boy, oh boy, sorry. 
If you don't mind, I'll uh, put this video on hold a moment and beat the crap out of him. <laughs> Only kidding. I love him. Yeah, so these are like these are 1860s photos. Oh, good, he shut up. He has an 1870s photograph. You can tell by the ladies' dress. In the 1860s, the ladies' dresses were much more balloon and bell shaped. And as the 1860s uh, came to an end and the 1870s began, the dresses got more narrow and less wide in the skirt part. And ladies started wearing their hair in ba with bangs on the forehead. This guy looks like a train engineer or um, some kind of like ticket taker on a train. So he could have been a train, a train conductor, a train operator, or a train a railroad employee of some sort. He even has the little pocket watch that railroad employees had. And he has an awesome pinky ring. If you can see that, it's hard to make it out. But I like his hat. His hat is really awesome. And that's a tin type. Now we have definite 1860s photographs here. And as I told you, in the 1870s, ladies started wearing bangs on their foreheads, but in the 1860s, they generally wore their hair parted down the min middle and a bun at the nape of their neck. Again, we have two 1860s photographs. And we have a youthful um, young man here with tinted cheeks. And you can see that fringe chair I mentioned earlier in the photo. And then we have this lady with a bell-shaped gown. So the hem, you know, the skirt part of her dress is bell-shaped. And the hair is parted down the center, showing us that it's an 1860s photograph. We have some more 1860s photos. We have this gentleman here. That's a nice clear photo. And here we have another lady with the hair parted down the center telling me it's 1860s. More 1860s photos. We have a grandmotherly type lady here. That's a really nice image. And we have an elderly gentleman here. And now it looks like we're getting into the 1870s with these photographs. See the little girl with the bangs? That's showing me 1870s in the style of gown or dress or costume is typically of the 1870s. And <clears throat> this picture appears to be late 1860s, very, very early 1870s. The dresses um, are still wide, but not as wide. And the hair starts to change, as you can see. So this is telling me late 1860s, early, early 1870s. And that's a nice group photo. And as we come to a conclusion, this appears to be album fillers. And Victorians could just buy these and add them to uh, their albums. And it appears to be a crucifix monument with sun rays in the background, people standing on a hillside, ladies down here. Nice image. And here's some kind of memorial photograph. Um, it shows you, these were usual, uh, usually like flowers that they placed on graves. So the person on the other side of this photo may have been deceased and this was a memorial to them on the back side of the photo. And it appears to be a young girl in the 1870s. And she's holding a really neat purse it appears to be made out of crocodile skin. And
and that's all. That's all we have. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some of the photos out of this uh, album and show you the backs of the cards and we'll see if we can see any names or any identification or information that can help us find out more information on the people in these albums because uh, that's fascinating. So just hang in there and I'll take these cards out and show you in a moment. Okay, so I got all the photos out of this album. It was very, very difficult to do so because um, apparently the little slots that hold these photographs are very tight and very, it's like a tight squeeze. And as you're trying to slide these cards out, the paper that surrounds the album tends to split, tear, rip, and just disintegrate. So I did it with uh, Surgeon's Precision and spent a good 30 minutes doing it, which was not fun. Let's just put it that way. So I'm gonna show you the fronts and backs of the cards. And you'll see the logos of the photographer. And this one has a little artist palette with a camera, which is quite nice. And it has a price, an original price of 75 cents. So back then they would pay like one price and they'd get like several photos for, it could be 12 for a dollar, four for 75 cents. So that's really neat because it shows you part of the history of the particular photographer. It gives you an idea of how costly these photos were at the time. 75 cents was a lot of money in the uh, 1860s, 1880s. You know, the Victorian times, people made 40 cents an hour, 80 cents an hour. They didn't make very much money. And we have initials on the back. Unfortunately, I don't know what they stand for. So I'll never know who that gentleman is. That's what bugs me though, that I'll probably never know who half these people are and what their lives were like. So here's this photographer's logo and it has some writing on the back, October 29th, 1930. I don't know what that says, Geest Will. So, okay, this photograph was definitely not taken in 1930 but something happens in 1930 that somebody notated it. So it could be where it says the word will. Maybe this photo album was part of somebody's will and they were given that photograph on that date. Or they, it could have been the person that received this album. So that's a very interesting information, although it doesn't help me to figure out who that lady was. So, so far, a lot of these people come from different geographic locations. So we have Pennsylvania, we have Columbus, Ohio. I noticed some of these cards come from Wisconsin. So this was quite a, a family removed by geography. And my dog just burped. You hear him? He's burping. Ay, ay, ay. So we have Pennsylvania. And you can see the, uh, now when you see generally a logo of a photographer with a train or a horse and carriage, that means they were generally traveling photographers. So, um, or they could have had a studio, but did, uh, travel as well. So that's, uh, pretty amazing. And look at that old, uh, train. It's quite nice. So we have a tintype. Generally, you will never find information on a tintype. And the reason being is since it was developed on blackened iron, the backs are usually dark and it's too dark for pencil writing or ink writing to identify the people. So you will never see information unless they scratched it in and engraved it, which I've actually seen before. And we have some information here. Theodore, Theodora Damone taken June 4th, 1877. And that's wonderful because now we have information and the date that photograph was taken in Utica, New York. Quite amazing. So now I can do a little genealogy, look up and research on that little baby. And this is Wisconsin. This looks like an 1870s photograph. 
or an 1880s. This definitely looks like Civil War time frame. And this was taken by apparently C.G. Blatt and he was a, a traveling artist. So photographers used to call themselves artists back then. And so this guy traveled around from uh, location to location taking people's photos. He has a really great logo on the back, which is quite neat. Now we have a tintype. And again, I'll have a better chance of seeing God than uh, finding out information of who this gentleman was. His eye looks pretty strange. Doesn't it look like his left eye is a glass eye. That is just morbid. And yeah, we don't have info. Now this is definitely an 1860s photograph. I can tell because the corners are square, not rounded. And they have a little border going around it, which uh, really dated it to the 1860s. And this was taken in Pulaski, New York. This is 1860s, 1870s photograph. This was a cabinet card that appears to be cut down. It might have uh, had more of a border at one time. And what's neat is about the back, it says prices reduced. So... It was basically a budget photographer of the time where he made affordable portraits for people. And that was from Pennsylvania. Now here's another cut down card. As you can see, it's an uneven edge on the top. Someone cut this uh, to make it fit into this album. And it appears to be an 1870s, 1880s lady. And this was Wisconsin. This is probably an 1870s card. Um, you see how the corners are rounded? They started doing that in the 1870s. Pottsville, PA. It has very interesting information on the bottom about the negatives. So the um, backs of these cards were really actually historical if you think about it because they explained a lot about the time this guy looks like he worked um for a railroad is a neat hat and you can see his pocket watch and mostly railroad people did have pocket watches they had to time the trains this may have been an 1860s photo that somebody cut to fit into the album it looks hand cut And it was from Wisconsin. Another 1860s looking photo that was cut. And it's from the same photographer as you can see. This is another 1860s, 1870s looking photo. And we have Pennsylvania. This looks like an 1860s photo. As you can see, the edges are squared with the border going around it. We have the photographer's info back here from New York Gallery in Missouri. So basically on the backs of these cards, it was like the photographer's business card. Not only was it an advertisement, it was a business card. And uh, I think that's quite neat. Looks like this 1860s photo was cut to fit into the album. And it appears to have some info on the top. It has like a name. Philadelphia. Here's another 1860s looking photo. And we've seen a photo from that photographer earlier. There's a cut down card from the 1860s era. And somebody cut it. You can see it's very uneven to fit that album.
Again, another 1860s photo that was cut. And they did it unevenly. So the same photographer as the previous one. This looks like an 1880s photo. Could be even earlier. Cute little girl. And yeah, so it was dated. Has info, which is great. Age five years, the 22nd of, hard to make out, hold on. The 22nd of something. 1885. And it gives more information. I guess she lived in Florida from what I see here. So that's great. When you get stuff like this, it's like uh, really spectacular. Is a group photo, probably uh, late 1860s, very early 1870s, as you can tell by the clothing. We have information, and again, the card was it was 75 cents for the photo package, and they only got a few photos for 75 cents, and that was a lot of money back then, like I mentioned earlier. Now we have a album filler, which is religious in nature. It looks like something, maybe they were a Catholic family. Well, they were at least Christian, that's for sure. So it says Crop of Christ. And then we have that memorial card, which uh, symbolized somebody passed away in this book. And this was uh, funeral flowers. And there's no info, sadly. And last but not least, we have this cute little girl, probably 1880s or late 1870s. And she has a little crocodile purse or alligator purse. And has a picture of a globe. And it was from Reading, Pennsylvania. So I hope you enjoyed another one of my videos. If you like what you see, hit the thumbs up and subscribe. And uh, as I get more antique Victorian photo albums, I'll be listing them so you can see how people once lived. And have a great day. And once again, thank you for stopping by.